Hi guys, good evening. Welcome to your academy. Uh, let's continue multi NIC part six. In the last part, we saw we, and we had configured the VPC pairing between the VPC one and VPC two. After pairing, we tried to reach Europe instance NIC one IP address from US VM but uh, 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 VM one. But the connectivity between or receivability between these two machines was not happened. Why? I will tell you now the reason. Now, by default, whenever you try to or you will initiate the packet right for 10.2.11.2 network. So, in this case, your destination IP address is 10.2.11.2 and source IP address is your us vm instance 10.2.1.2 what is happening here so now looking at the vm instance routing table you have a default dot pointing towards the 10.1.1.1 which is vpc1 subnet 1 gateway so your vm will forward this traffic towards the vpc subnet vpc receive the traffic vpc look for the destination 10.2.1.2 so the destination 10.1.1 uh, 10.2.1.2 is reachable via VPC2. So simply VPC1 will handle traffic to the VPC2. Further, VPC2 forward traffic to the actual instance NIC1 interface. Now, as soon as you receive the packet where your destination is 10.2.11.2 and a source 10.2.1.2. Now, what will happen? Now, when this Europe instance will revert, then in that case, source become a destination and destination become a source. So, source is now destination is what is your source IP address? 10.2.1.2 and now your source will be your NIC1 IP address 10.2.11.2. What will happen? This instance will look for the its routing table and what what it's found what it found 10.2.1.2 there is a no route for 10.2.1.2 so it will match in a default route so your instance will send packet via nic0 oh so this is something uh, again again it's a asymmetric routing so what is the solution right so in a part 3 we saw the sol uh, 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 we learn about the static routing you can add a static route but all the time it is not feasible <clears throat> then we saw the vpc pairing and now we can see the policy routing now we tar target to see the policy routing so what is policy routing if you compare it with the other oems it's it is just like a pbr policy based routing so what we will do here we will create a separate routing table for nic0 called as a rt1 routing table and in that routing table we will add the default route pointing towards the nic1 default gateway so what will happen your traffic will come from the VPC network 1, VPC network 2, hit to the NIC1. NIC1 will not look for the global, its global routing table. It will look for the specific routing table which is attached to the NIC1 and it will revert from the same path. Clear? Yes. So we have to create one routing table and attach to the NIC1. Perfect. So let's log into the machine. Europe, let's first log into the US machine. Here you go. Uh, this is our Red Hat Linux. Uh, uh, policy routing doesn't support by the window. Window doesn't support policy based routing. Uh, uh, Ubuntu can support less than 18.4 LTS version, right? And Red Hat does support. So let's look at your IP address, IP config. Ethernet 0 means NS0 having IP address 10.1. 1.2 right now try to ping from this nic just try to ping this ip address 10.2.11.2 okay go 10.2.11.2 yeah this is your uh, nic1 ip address and now try to ping nic0 to nic0 ping 10.2 1.12.2 is yes, I can able to be 
before go there let's first validate whether you have a vpc peering or not vpc peering must required vpc peering go to the vpc peering yes we do have a vpc peering between the vpc 1 and 2 and 2 and 1 so let's go and configure the policy routing how to configure the policy routing right so there are standard command uh, i can say see here is a format First, you have to assign the IP address to the interface. It's already there. It is already there. See, Ethernet one already there, 10.2.1.2. Just copy this IP address because now, now you are building the new routing table. So, wherever I have mentioned the IP address, mention the IP address 10.2.1.2, right? Then, Netmask 255.255.255, broadcast the same interface IP address. It's a cloud environment. Perfect. Then here IP route add. You can add default gateway address of your subnet. So what's your subnet now? Ten dot two dot one dot two is the IP address. So the first IP address is always your subnet. So ten dot two dot one dot one. Ten dot two dot 1.1 and here you have to configure the your IP address interface IP address Ethernet zero interface which is 10.1.10.2.1.2 is your IP address then default gateway pointing towards the force gateway when your traffic receive on the inet uh, 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 zero inet net not net network zero NIC one so you can add Default route towards 10.2.1.1. Then add a rule. Right? If traffic will initiate from interface IP address 10.2.1.2 or from Ethernet 0, please read RTR1 table. If tra traffic received on 10.2.1.2, which is Ethernet 1 IP address, right? Read the routing table 1. Perfect. This is how you can configure the P policy routing. Copy. Go and just paste, paste it over here. Paste. Perfect. So now what will happen? Your whenever you receive the traffic on NIC1, NIC1 will refer the router R, the routing table name RT1. Same way, uh, uh, right? You can configure it for the Europe region, Europe IF config, IF config, your Ethernet one having IP 10.2.11.2, gateway address is 10.2.11.1, go and change the script, script means configuration, little bit you have to change, okay, so now the Europe add ethernet interface ip address broadcast yes it will be the same right then gateway ip address see by default every instance create a routing table for its connected interface now here we are creating a routing table for only nic1 here we can say it1 so you have to manually add connected subnet route connected subnets route so what is connected network is a 10.2.11.0 slash 24 right so here we have used the gateway ip address and the nic1 ip address then default gateway pointing towards the gateway 10.2.11.2 then whenever request request or any traffic initiated from interface 10.2.11.2 eth1 refer rtr1 table whenever you receive the traffic on ethernet 1 slash 1 having ip address 2 refer the table rtr1 in the rtr1 what we have mentioned default route towards the 10.2.11.1 means what will happen whenever you receive the traffic of nic1 you will refer rtr1 table where you have added a default route towards the subnet gateway so return traffic also will follow the same path so it's my Euro europe machine 
perfect now go uh, to the us and try to ping the same ip address nic is one ip address I, I, ip address or it's one ip address from the us see guys you can now able to ping how why because now this nic1 have a dedicated or separate rtr1 routing table where you have add default route pointing towards its gateway 11.1 .1. so traffic will from forward from nic0 instance received by the vpc1 vpc1 will handle traffic to the vpc2 vpc2 handle traffic to the instance instance will look for the associate nic1 associate routing table in the nic1 uh, 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 associate routing table rtr1 you have a default route pointing towards the 10.2. 11.1 which is in the vpc2 so again your request traffic will flow from instance uh, europe instance 1 nic1 to vpc2 from vpc2 to vpc1 vpc1 to us instance nic0 we are so now go and check the connectivity between the europe source europe destination us vm so source is uh, yes this is europe ping 10.2.1.2 which is the ip address of us vm1 nic1 connected to the vpc2 enter yes you can how definitely now now you are initiating traffic from europe region so basically europe will look for the default routing table it will not look for look, uh, look for the custom routing table rtr1 why because this vm is initiating the traffic so default route match right then traffic handed over to handed handed over to vpc1 vpc look for the destination ip address 10.2.1.2 which is associated with the vpc2 subnet it will forward to vpc2 vpc2 will process the traffic and forward towards the us region us vm1 nic1 nic1 again have a custom route table attached where default route is pointing towards the vpc2 subnet 1 gateway fine thank you so much bye bye